today I am doing a patella luxation repair using a tibial crest transposition and maybe a trochleoplasty. Haven't already done so, please subscribe to our channel. Make sure you turn on notifications so you'll get a ding on your phone the next time you live stream. So this is a little one-year-old poodle and uh, it has a history of intermittent left hind limb lameness. And we can see the patella sitting there. Now it's luxated, now it's back in. So you can see that it's popping in and out easily. The opposite side will also luxate, but it's not showing any clinical signs of lameness. Now as far as our initial skin incision, I usually use the tibial crest to the patella as the central third of my incision. So I'm going to extend it a third up and a third down from that. And I go immediately parapatella, so just right alongside the patella tendon um, from my incision. Now, a really important thing to do is when you're doing a... Can I get cautery plugged in, please? When you're doing a patella luxation repair is to make sure that you look at the cruciate ligament because you can have secondary cruciate ligament rupture um, with patella luxation. So that's really important to check to make sure it's not present. The other thing is if you've got a dog with a chronic patella luxation and it suddenly becomes lame, that often is not because of the patella luxation but because of a cruciate ligament rupture. So I've got a gelpie retractor in here. That's a big gelpie. Can I get a two, number two, please? Yes. Can I? Again, the first thing I'm going to do is examine the cruciate ligament. So just keep the stifle in slight flexion. Go ahead and hold on to that, please. And then I'm going to make a little stab incision right next to the patella tendon with a blade. And I'll put my nuts and bones up there and do a push cut to open up the joint. Now when I do stifle surgery, I really like to use Gelpie retractors. I know some people will do without Gelpie retractors, but I think that they're just so important in order to get the exposure that you need. You can already see our lateral condyle. I'm just extending my incision eventually. So now we'll luxate the patella and then get Alex to hold it up like this. What's that? Yeah. Yeah, fent bolus would be great. Um, all right, so next thing we're going to use is a sen retractor <clears throat> to pull the infrapatellar fat pad out of the way. <clears throat> and then we're looking inside the joint and we're going to assess that cruciate ligament. So I don't know if you guys can see that in there, you probably can. So that's the cruciate ligament sitting right there. That's the cranial cruciate, and that's the caudal cruciate back there. And so I'm very confident that that is, um, that that's intact. Next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take out my gelpie, and using a towel clamp, I'm gonna look at the articular surface of the patella to make sure that there's not any eburnation or full thickness cartilage wear. So I'm looking at the articular surface of the patella there. And then I'm also trying to get some assessment of whether this groove is deep enough. And basically you want about 50% of the thickness of the patella to be within the groove. And in my opinion, that groove is pretty deep. So I'm not concerned about that at all. 
So now I'm finished with the intra-articular push portion of the surgery. And I do not close the joint at this point uh, because I want to do my tibial crush transposition and then if I'm not happy um, that it's stable, then I can always go back and do a trochlearplasty later. Can I get suction turned on? It's working, sorry, stand correctly. All right, so, and this uh, dog was caught very early, he's just a year old, um, so um, I think we're gonna have a really good outcome here. All right, so can I, uh, you know what I might do, I might just close the joint capsule but leave the fascia, I uh, know I won't, I'll leave it. All right, so now I'm gonna cut and extend my incision through the fascia that's overlying the cranial tibial muscle. Just like this. Cauterize that little bleeder. And I'll put a Homan retractor behind the cranial tibial muscle to expose that surface. Hold on to that, please. And try to hold that so that it's, maybe put a hand there so it stays down in lateral recumbency. All right, so you can see the condyle there and then the lateral aspect in that fossa where the cranial tibial muscle lays. Now, one thing that people do or forget or, or, or don't recognize is that the articular surface is quite far caudal so you can take a very large chunk of tibial crest and it's important that I leave the distal periosteal attachment intact because that's going to act as my tension band. So I've gone almost all the way down, and then I'll take my freer elevator, and if you listen closely, you're going to hear a little pop, okay? And so that's when I'm breaking that distal bone, but leaving the periosteal attachment intact. All right, so now we'll remove this, and I'll grab a towel clamp, and I'm going to move this over, let's make sure it's completely released. Okay, and I'll move it over, and I'm going to hold it, do we have a bigger towel clamp in there? Is that about as big as we've got? So I'm going to use my towel clamp just to hold it in place, and then see if the patella wants to stay in. So I can still barely pop it out, but it really wants to stay in. I've really moved it over. Yeah, I can feel my the bed over here, so I've really moved it over. Go ahead and grab onto that, please, for me. Quite both, like one hand, and quite tightly. All right. So, can I please get some O five four pins? So you want your pins to be maybe 10-15% of the width of the bone there. So that looks pretty good to me. This is 0 0.054 inch pins.
You want to make sure that the pin is going perpendicular to the tibial shaft. So I want to make sure that I'm not going to go into the joint. And then I'm palpating the pin coming out caudally. And then I'm just going to back it off just a little bit. Can I get a pin cutter, please? Actually, a cerclage kit would be great. Um, if I did have a ruptured cruciate ligament, um, I would go ahead and do an extra capsular repair at the same time. Um, if I discovered it in surgery, if I discovered it, like if I was aware of it preoperatively, I might think about doing something like a uh, modified TPLO or a TTA or something like that, or a closing wedge. Or, sorry, a core-based TPLO. and caudally to make sure I can feel that back there. Might get another pin just to compare the length. See how far in I've gone. So that's pretty good there. All right, so now we'll remove our towel clamp and just make sure that I've moved it over as far as I thought I did. So. I can luxate it, but it really wants to stay in. And that's even without any kind of soft tissue repair. So it, it wants to stay in place. So you can have a look at how far around I've moved that. So now this is aligned really nicely with my trochlear groove. All right, so that wants to stay in there. My periosteal attachment is still intact down here. Um, I still may end up putting an attention band. Can I get a 20 gauge wire? Yes. So close wire. I'll have you hold on to that please for me. So I am gonna put in a tension band. Not absolutely necessary here, but um, that distal segment was a little bit more mobile than I like. So I'll dr just drill my hole. Do a figure of eight wire like this. And the key when you're putting in any kind of cerclage wire is to keep tension on the wire as you twist it. So I reckon that's good. And then my wire leaving three twists in. Didn't eat enough wheat picks today. <laughs> and I'm just going to push that down a little bit to bury it underneath the cranial tibial muscle. I don't mind. All right, and so the next thing we'll do is we'll take this out. I'm gonna bend my pins over, and the way I bend them is I use the suction tip, and I push down in the opposite direction that you think you would, and then I twist it around like that, and that means that the bend is gonna be closer to the bone, just like that. 
Okay. And then we'll just cut these off. Where's the wire cutter that came with the soucage kit, or did it, did, we, did it not come with one? Okay. Can you hold on to that pin for me, please? Twist this a little bit, see if I can make it a little bit lower profile. Good range of motion, patella is nicely in. A little bit of lavage. Can I get some, um, maybe some 3 0 proline, please? Oh, 2 0 proline, please. Vest over pants suture pattern. What that means is that I'm going to go partial thickness or, or just one bite in the cranial segment and then two bites in the caudal segment. You run that for me, please. What that'll do is it's going to make the cranial segment um, overlap the caudal segment. So it's tightening up. The fasciolata. So you'll see how that overlaps like that. I know that there are a few questions there. What I'll do is I'll just save the questions for the end when I can go over and have a look. And about four mil. So just one side cranially. And then both in and out caudally. Slip knots every time. Now, uh, distally here, I'm, trying to, I'm going to try to pull that cranial tibial fascia over the top of those pins if I can. Try to reduce the likelihood. Can you hold on to that place for me? Try to reduce the likelihood that we're going to have irritation from those pins through the skin.
not as effective as I would have hoped. Just one, please. Just run that for me. Um, Autumn, do we think that the nerve block took? What's that? Yeah, I might do an intra-articular injection of methodicane, please. Uh, just the full dose. This is a sub Q layer. The fact that we did not do a tibial crush transition. On this dog, I mean that we did not do a trochleoplasty on this dog means that it's going to recover a lot more quickly. Again, I'm making every effort to get as much soft tissue closed over those pins as I can. Can I please get some 3O PDS? Just waiting for our methivacaine. So I, I usually do just a tibial crest transposition to start with. Um, and then, uh, if necessary, I'll go and do a trochleoplasty as well. Some people take the opposite approach, but I feel like you need to align it first. Um, so I tend to use just pins and then maintaining that distal uh, periosteal attachment in place. And that's usually enough, although this one I thought that it was a little bit more mobile than I'd like. And so I went ahead and put in the tension band again. Uh, and why am I using proline? Well, because I'm counting on that repair of the fascia lata to last longer than the four to eight weeks that, that PDS lasts. And so that's why I'm going with a, a non-absorbable suture material. Now I'm injecting mepivacaine into the joint. I've made my repair too watertight. It's supposed to leak out into my fascial incision. So we did a nerve block as well, but since this dog was light during the anesthetic, I'm concerned that it might not have taken. So um, that's why I'm doing the intraarticular block as well. I'm going to do everything I can to 
do, you know, to have a local anesthetic providing the majority of my pain relief postoperatively because it's more effective and it has less systemic effects. Now I'm just doing an intradermal suture pattern. I'm going to let um, uh, guys know out there that I'm finished. Yep. Thank you. I think Belle's in charge today. A lot of surgeries today. Yeah. Uh, I have to hard, or, um, retrieve a catheter that c got cut off inside a cephalic vein. Wow. Uh, he's had an X ray. Uh, I'm not sure. Right, cutting the tape on the yeah, catheter, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Don't pull quite so tight there, so oh, I can. Sorry. You alright? Yeah. I'll just do one after. Thank you. Just briefly, um, it'll have methadone post-op uh, onto codeine. Uh, uh, meloxicam. It's already been on meloxicam in the past, so it can handle that. Um, no, no antibiotics to go home. Just recheck it. Uh, recheck at two weeks if everything's going well. Yes, please. And I'm just before we finish up, I'm just going to run it through range of motion, make sure I'm happy that the patella is firmly in place. So range of motion is great, there's no restriction, and I cannot luxate that patella. 
Excellent. All right, so I'll just come over and make sure that I've answered all the questions. So there are no new questions there. Um, I really appreciate everybody logging in and, and signing in and watching. Um, if you haven't already done so, please subscribe to our channel. Make sure you turn on notifications, and we will see you again soon.